Hi, my name is Rebecca Elder, and I am a preservation consultant based in Austin, Texas. And today we're going to be talking about how to safely display your books using a Mylar book cradle. And that's what we are doing today, is we are making the cutest, most adorable little book cradle in the world. Um, so it's very cute. What I like about this in particular is that A, it is easy, and I'm pretty sure we can teach anyone to make this, and once you know how to make it, you can bang it out in 10 minutes. That's always nice. Um, and it's custom made for each book. So we're going to provide the best possible support for each, each object. And it's comparatively inexpensive. Yes, you're buying Mylar, which is not cheap. However, buying plexiglass book cradles that are designed for exhibits runs into the hundreds of dollars per, per stand. So um, I think this is a really great little substitute. It works well for small books, but there are adjustments so that you can get it to handle books up to like 10 inches tall and about two or three pounds. So that's, you know, a 10 inch tall book is a pretty good sized book. So we're going to start, I've kind of rough cut everybody a piece of mylar that sort of matches your book, but we have to start by actually cutting it to size. So you want something, we're going to start out, you want something that's about just slightly less than three times the height of your book. So if your book is 16 inches, you probably want, so three times six is 18, so you probably want like 17 and three quarters or a little less than that. So you're going to start by measuring your book. I usually try to stay away from rulers, but I think on this particular, and if you have a book that's in a box, go ahead and open it up. I just didn't open them up because I wasn't sure I was going to be able to tell which book went with each box easily. Um, so you can just, and then at the end of the class, you can just put the books back in the box and they'll be safe to travel. So just measure the height from the top to the bottom. Um, mine is five, just over five and a half inches. So I'm going to show you a way to trim this so that it's the right size without having a board shear. Um, right. It would be lovely if we all had a 48 inch board shear that would cut stuff this wide, but we don't. So. I'm going to show you a way to kind, it's not perfect by a long shot, but it'll kind of jerry-rig it. Um, you're going to have to even up both sides, because I just cut this with scissors, because I didn't have a 48-inch board shear either. Um, so my book, okay, there's my ruler. so I'm going to start out by just evening up one edge. So when you're cutting, you always want to be standing. You can get much better angle standing. It's very unsafe to cut sitting down. And if you're right-handed, you probably want the edge you're cutting to the right. If you're left-handed, you probably want it to the left. So first thing we're going to do is I know that the short ends of this are even because it came off of a roll. So I'm going to just match the short ends up perfectly evenly and lay them across one of these lines on my cutting mat. And that way, if I cut against one of these lines, I'll have a nice straight right angle. So I'm going to use my ruler. And here's the trick with this. I don't want to put a crease there. So I am going to, and this is an absolutely jerry-rigged way to do this, so, but I think it will work. 
Um, you have knives that have cork on the back. And you would think that that cork would make it better for cutting, but it actually makes it worse because your knife will slip under the edge. So put the cork side up. And then just cut along the edge. So I go through pretty easy because it's such thin mylar. Yep. So now I have this. This is really hard to see. And you also always want to cut towards yourself. You don't want to cut the same direction you want. But now if I line this all up against a line, I can just go in and slice off this little strip and it is not the world's straightest edge, but it is going to work for this. So now that we have one straight edge, so I said this was five and a half, 15, 16 and a half. So I'm going to do this at just about 16 and a quarter inches. And it's going to be the exact same thing, except so you have lines on your cutting mat for inches. And I'm going to use that as my guideline, which means I had everything backwards to do it correctly. But is that my straight side? Yes. So it'll be the same thing. And if I line it up there. So Rebecca, is it a quarter inch? Under the it's a times. it's it's a little less than three times. So a quarter inch is probably not a bad bet. Okay. Because what we don't want is for your book to the, one of the really nice exhibit things about this cradle. And this one has gone through the mail, which is why it's ratty looking. But one of the really nice things about the cradle is that it makes your book look like it's sort of floating in space. Mm -hmm. So if your mylar extends past it you won't have that effect. Okay. So a quarter of an inch, that'll, <coughs> you might even take it to um, 3 eighths, except that on this cutting mat, quarter of an inch, I think, is about the best you're going to be able to eyeball. Okay. Um, this is, measurements on this don't have to be super, super, super precise which is also really wonderful. On some things, if you're off by a millimeter, the whole thing goes straight to hell, and it won't on this. So I'll line that up. About 16. So on this, if you're going to do a half an inch, so these are half inches. If you're going to do a quarter of an inch measurement, you're just going to eyeball, and it'll be close enough. Just make sure your ruler looks pretty parallel. And so if you all want to all go and get your mylar cut to size, that's the first step. And I will all walk around and troubleshoot once I get this piece pulled off. OK, are we, I think we're about, everyone's about cut. <clears throat> So the next thing we have to do is we want, our, we want our sheet of mylar to be about three times the girth of the book. So <clears throat> this is easy. Take the book, wrap it once, wrap it twice, wrap it three times. And then just make a cut and cut off the excess. You don't necessarily 100% need to cut off the excess. It'll just be easier if you don't have all of that flapping around. How many times did you 
cloth it? Um, I wrapped it around so that there were three layers of mylar on each side. So that's one, and now you're into two. This is when it gets fun. Yay, fun. Um, so we're going to fold the mylar into thirds. And again, we're going, this is, I'm not going to sit here and measure out a third and a third and a third. I'm going to eyeball it as best as I can and call it good. If I might see. Perfect. It just fits my book. So once you have it figured out where your thirds are, you can use your bone <coughs> folder. And again. So there's one side done. Now I can, if I want to get really obsessive about it, I can push so that this meets. Like I can push this inner flap in so that it meets. And so you just take your bone folder, put the point of it, you kind of hold it with that so you can put pressure on with your index finger. And so you will have a strip like this. So, um, do you want me to do the next step, or do you want to get through that first? Do that. Okay, do that first. So I'm going to sit down for this. And the first fold is way easy, because we're just going to fold it about in the middle. Super easy, everyone can do that, right? The next fold, you're going to put your book in the crease and then mark. What I tend to do is, and that's why you have an awl, it's hard to mark mylar, you can't really use a pencil, but if you want, you can make a tiny little scratch on it so that you know where you're supposed to be folding. And then, of course, I've already lost my little scratch because, oh, there it is. Because the lighting in here is not particularly conducive to doing fine work. But let's see if that's it. And try to keep your angles fairly, you know, try to keep things fairly lined up. And another. And if we are lucky and the bookbinding gods have aligned, you should have something that fits right around the spine of your book pretty nicely. I am not quite there because I couldn't see, but I'm going to work with it. So that's probably the next two folds for you all to make, and then we'll come back and talk about making the other direction folds. And then we'll be almost done. So I am here. My next two folds are going to be just slightly shorter than the foredge of the book. So again, I'm going to use my all to mark it. The difference is this time, so the last time we made the taco folds, this time we're going to make mountain folds like this. So the folds will be going the opposite direction. Does that make sense? That is probably the hardest part of the whole operation. Well, aside from the cutting, getting that logistics figured out. Scrunch, scrunch, scrunch. So you'll end up like this, and then do the same thing on the other side.
you get to the point where you need to know what page you're going to exhibit of your book because we're going to make this fit the book's opening. You don't want to stress the book. You don't want to open it any farther than it wants to open. So like this little book, yeah, the covers want to flop back, but the text block doesn't really want to go any farther than that. So we'd want our cradle to be at this kind of an angle. But compare that to this book, which is pretty happy being fairly flat. So we're going to figure out a way to accommodate what the book wants. And depending on where your book is going to be open, things would be different. Like if my book is going to be open there, my cradle will probably look different than if it's going to be open there. So I'm going to put the book here, open it to the page we're going to display it at, and then measure this angle. And for me, that's about two inches. And I'm going to make one more crease about two inches and it's going to be going the opposite direction of the mountain creases you made at the edge of the book back to the taco, back to the taco. exactly going to go back to the taco Get it, please So you'll end up with that. And then the book, and then you'll do the same thing on the other side with the measurement so that the book will fall in really nicely. And once you have those last two folds made, all that's left to do is to trim off any excess and tape the ends shut. All righty. So Last thing we're going to do is we're going to tape them together. And we're going to use 3M number 415 double-sided tape because that is the only acceptable tape. This stuff, um, we've got several rolls. When you buy your own roll, Always keep it in a bag. Don't ever put it down directly on your work surface because the edges are sticky and it'll pick up every piece of dust that there is and then you'll be able to see it and it'll just be ugly. So our last thing we're going to do is you might end up needing to trim if your mylar is too long. If you have things hitting, um, you kind of want your wings to be at about a 90 degree angle where they hit the ground. So I think I need to trim off just a little bit. Again, I'm not, this isn't measuring, this is just, I'm trimming a little bit off so I don't have, so I can get my 90 degree angle. That's better. Yeah, if, if it just kind of goes almost, almost directly into the crease, we're in good shape. And then I'm just going to take a piece of ah! It's very dark in here, which makes it really hard to see what you're doing. <laughs> So I am getting ready to tape if anybody wants to get closer and see what I am up to. So I have done a little trimming so that everything can stand at a nice 90 degree angle. And I put a piece of tape where I get tripped up on doing this is making sure that I get my tape on the right side of things. Because if I would have put my tape on this angle, 
then I'm going to stick my support to the cradle to the surface that I'm working on, which is probably not a great plan. So a piece here and a piece here. And then just use your bone folder to really make sure everything is stuck together. That's not beautiful, but okay. And then take this piece off and kind of ah, put everything into position. And if I'm lucky, it'll just fall into place. But as long as you haven't like, really stuck it down hard, you'll be able to move it around a little bit. There, that ought to do it. And the other side is easy. Just pull that off. And that'll pop into place. And you can use your hands to put it down. And now it's a little squishier than I'd like because it's two mil, not five. But you see how it works. The last thing we should talk about, and unfortunately I don't have any because it was in the supply snafu, but your pages are probably going to be flopping around like this. And we would like to get that a little more stable. So you can buy, for small books like this, you want quarter inch polyethylene strap, which just a quarter inch piece of polyethylene. This is mylar, but and you'll wrap it around the book like this. The trick is you're going to, here's what I would do, is you pass it through your stand, cut it, and then you're going to tape it together but you're not going to tape it to the book, obviously, and you're not going to tape it to the stand. You're just going to put a little piece of tape there and then wrap it back around so it's hidden. And there, you, there is the, there's the stand.